Hey everybody, my name is Jeffrey Crochet, and today I will be using the interactive simulation program provided by the University of Colorado to examine the differences between sugar and salt solutions. So, taking a look at our interactive program on uh, first sight, what we have here is a salt shaker ready at hand and a sugar shaker where we can go ahead and add uh, different solids to what we looks like we have a beaker. So we can also add water or take away water to affect the concentrations of our solutes that we will be adding. But as well as these sugar and salt shakers and water, we have provided a uh, wired circuit with a battery and a light bulb. And the first thing that we notice is upon putting the circuit in plain water, over here we can see the concentrations of salt and sugar available which at the moment we have none and there is no current provided to power this light bulb but as we add a salt solute we go ahead and add a bunch we can see as the concentration is increased power to the light bulb is demonstrated removing the salt and doing the same with the sugar shaker Adding a, a lot of the sugar, no matter how much I add, shows that no power is provided to the to the light bulb. Um, a lot of people would ask why this is, and the main difference between the conductivity present is the presence of an ionic bond between sodium chloride and covalent bonds present in the sugar. Now, the differences in an ionic bond is that there's a very strict flow of electrons from a metal to a non-metal. For instance, in this instance, uh, there's a dipole moment between sodium and chlorine, chlorine where electrons flow from the uh, sodium atom to the chlorine atom, providing a conductivity and a general flow of electrons. Now, what isn't present in sugar is a general flow of electrons because in this polar covalent bond electrons are shared back and forth between uh, different elements and there's no general flow of electrons uh, because everything is shared back and forth and in the ionic bond we see a very strict flow of electrons from one atom to the other. Looking at the scale microscopically as we add sodium chloride, we can see that our purple atom, sodium, and our chlorine, which is green down here, as they are dissolved in water, anions and cations tend to separate in the water, which provides a flow of electrons through the solvent from one anion to cation, but compared to adding sucrose we see globs of molecules and the sharing of electrons pretty much stays between each individual molecule and there's no real transfer of electrons across the solvent to provide conductivity for for the, the light bulb which was powered earlier looking on a really microscopic level we can go ahead and take a look at these anions and cations separating and what what it is is it's the spatial difference between the anion and the cation that provides the flow of electrons through the solvent which provides conductivity for the light bulb in the circuits uh, you can let this play out and observing sugar molecules they kind of tend to glob together and not really space out which doesn't provide a flow of electrons across that solvent. Uh, understanding the capability of solutes and their their ability to dissolve in a solvent has provided uh, companies with many industrial uses. Um, many chemical studies have been made observing the effects of solutes 
on the solvent. And uh, I hope this, this video, uh, and as long as the interaction with the simulation program has given you some insight on how bonds can actually affect the solvent that they are dissolved in, thank you for watching.